we come to you today just thanking you for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Lord God, that in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in the world, that you are a God of order that you are a God who sustains us, Lord God, in everything that we do. We thank you uh, that you remain the same, Lord God. Your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, Lord God, in the midst of all um, the craziness and the chaos that's going around, we we are thankful that you are a pillar, Lord God, that we can lean on, that your Holy Spirit um, is true, and that it is uh, your Spirit is the, the Supreme Counselor, and we thank you uh, for everything that you're doing. We thank you for the uh, opportunity that we have here to study uh, your Word today and every day, Lord God, and we give this Bible study uh, class over to you. I put it in your hands. May it be wor your words and not my own, Lord God. We pray over our, our minds, our hearts, and our spirits that it will all be open up to what you want to to say to us today, Lord God, I thank you that this word has ministered to me, and if it can minister to me, it can minister to others. So, God, I, I, I decree and declare uh, your blessing over the people now um, as we study your word in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, and everybody says, Amen. God bless you, Fuente family. Thank you for joining me today, as you might have seen um, on the title. Or when you were uh, logging in, you might have seen that uh, the title for today's Bible study is Shallow vs. Deep Wells. This is a uh, Bible study that God gave to me uh, last week, actually. And uh, the, the crazy thing is, is that uh, the apostle on Sunday gave a word of changing uh, wells, uh, which was crazy because uh, I did not know what message he was going to bring. And he did not know that I was planning this. Uh, for this uh, Bible study, but I believe that um, God is is beyond prophetic. He he just ties things together. There's just no way that that could have happened. Uh, you know, it's just, God is so cool. Uh, but that's the Bible study for today: shallow versus deep wells. So um, I'm going to get uh, right into it. I'm thankful. Uh, for the Bible study that God's given me today, I think um, that in the times that we're in, we need to be studying the word and not just requesting a word. I'm going to say that again. In the times that we are in, we need to be studying the word and not just requesting a word. A lot of times we ask God uh, to give us a word, uh, a prophetic word for a season. Um, but we are in a time where we are understanding that we cannot just live by a word. That's why Jesus says uh, that you do not live by bread alone. That word uh, bread is word. You do, just, you do not just live by a a word by a piece of bread, but you live by studying the word. And I think that a lot of believers in the season that we're in have begun to see that we can't just request prophetic words. We can't just keep asking God for word, but we have to study the word. And I know I made a declaration a little while ago over, uh, over, uh, Fuente as a whole, that Wednesdays are going to be one of the main pillars that God is going to use to grow our church. Um, I'm very firm behind that belief, and, and, and I know that um, God is doing it e e even now. And um, so I'm just, I'm just uh, thankful. I pray that I can get through everything today. Um, if not, I'm going to have to ask uh, the apostle uh, for an extension, because today my assignment is to talk about shallow versus deep wells. That's what God has given me. But there's another level um, that we can get to, and it's, it's the springs of living water. So right now I have to talk about shallow versus deep wells, but there's another level that I will not get to today, and that's the level of springs when Jesus talked about, um, you know, the springs of living water. Uh, but let's get uh, right into this. If you uh, have your Bible with you, turn with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. I have my Bible here. I hope you have it with you too. I got uh, my notes here, so I hope you're taking notes as well. John chapter 4, John chapter 4. We are going to go down to, we'll just start at verse 1. We'll just start at verse 1. John chapter 4, uh, read it with me. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Verse 4, but he needed to go through Samaria. I'm in John chapter 4, verse 4, for those who are still coming in. 
Verse 5, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being we, uh, weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. I'm going to stop there. On Sunday, the apostle uh, talked about how Abraham and Isaac uh, both had wells. Um, it was it was very deep. I'm talking about how, you know, there are old wells and then there are new wells. And he was talking about how even young ministers have to honor the old wells that, that are there. Uh, so referencing that. Uh, in Genesis, it talks about Abraham's wells, and it talks about how Isaac went through the same thing as Abraham, and Isaac was able to not only uh, open up wells, but he opened up wells, and people fought him for it, just like we heard on Sunday, and then he ha had to open up new wells, and they fought him for that, and finally he was able to have his wells. But if you look in Genesis, it never talks about Jacob and his wells, but they, um, the Bible always says he is uh, the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. But when you see the story of Abraham and Isaac, you often see famine and wells. But when you get to Jacob, you don't really see wells. And it's interesting that the only scripture reference for Jacob having a well comes in the New Testament, where Jesus was going through Samaria and he found himself at the well of Jacob. That is very deep. And I'll tell you why. Jacob's well was in Samaria. Samaria was a place where Jews wouldn't go. Jews and Samaritans did not um, get along together. And the reason, the reason for that is because what if you go deep in the history, Samaria or that area, the people of Samaria came from from um, Manasseh, who is the son of Joseph, and Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. Just follow me. I'm going. I'm going somewhere. So Jesus had to go through Samaria. A lot of times we say Jesus went through Samaria because he knew he had to encounter the woman at the well. But I submit to you this, that I believe Jesus knew he had to go through Samaria because he knew that there was a well there from his ancestry. Come on. He knew that Jacob had a well that he had to get to. And it's funny how the Jews did not like Samaritans, but the Jews were um, were not accessing a well that was part of their history. Jacob was a father of Israel. And because he had a favorite son, and, and the Bible says that all the brothers despised Joseph because of that division, that division carried on for so long that even though there was a well of blessing in Samaria, in Samaria, Jews would not go there. But Jesus said that he needed to go through Samaria and he was weary and he found himself at the well of Jacob. A well um, in, in ancient times was always uh, uh, considered a blessing. It was uh, considered that if you if you had a well, uh, you were independent. You didn't need to you didn't need to. Um, you, you were sustained by yourself. You didn't need water from anywhere else. And, and that was very, very significant to have a well. Now, um, what's interesting is that there's a difference between a well and a cistern. Now, the, the, the title of today's Bible study is shallow wells versus deep wells. A shallow well is also known as a cistern and a deep well is, we can just call it well. So from here on out, the shallow well I'm going to refer to as a cistern and the deep well I'm going to just refer as a well. So there's a difference between cisterns and wells. So Jesus found himself um, at a well. He found himself at a well that was the well of Jacob. This is very significant because Jacob had his favorite son, Joseph. And if you remember the story of Joseph um, in Genesis chapter 37, uh, um, chapter 37, verse 23, it says that 
uh, Joseph's brothers were so angry that he uh, was a dreamer and that he was telling them um, his dreams. And w we all know the story that his brothers threw him into a pit. And in Genesis chapter 37, it says that they threw him into a pit with no water. That word pit is a cistern. A cistern is a is a is a shallow well that only goes but so deep. So Joseph was thrown into a, a cistern or a shallow well. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verse 24, that there was no water in it. But what's interesting is, is that since Jesus found himself at Jacob's well, you have to understand the significance of the well itself, right? And Joseph, Joseph was thrown into a pit. And then he was taken out of a cistern. But let's turn to Genesis chapter 49, verse 22. And believe you me, I am going somewhere with this. Genesis chapter 49, verse 22. Hallelujah. Finding my place here. Amen. 49, verse 22. In this chapter... Jacob is giving the blessings to all his sons in Genesis chapter 49. Now, verse 22 says, Joseph is a fruitful bow, a fruitful bow by a well. His branches run over the wall. This is very significant. Joseph was the only son out of the 12 sons that received the blessing of a well. And that is very significant because his brothers threw him into a cistern, into a shallow well. And, and, and they called it a pit. He was thrown into the pit. But before Jacob died, he released the blessing of a well over Joseph. So what some people would try to throw you into a pit will eventually become your well. What people think is going to harm you or going to cause you to go slower in life, to stop you, to prevent you, will become your blessing. So Joseph went from being the person thrown into a pit, into a bad place, to receiving the blessing of a well from his father. That's very significant. So let's go back to John chapter 4, and we'll continue at verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to drink water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And that's what I was telling you before. Jews and Samaritans did not mix. But Joseph's well, but Jacob's well, I'm sorry, Jacob's well was not in Jewish territory. It was in Samaritan territory. That's very deep. So verse 10, Jesus answered her and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Verse 11, the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. So this, this verse lets us know that there are some wells that are deep, but then there are other wells that are shallow, also known as cisterns. Verse 12, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Verse 14, but whoever drinks from the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus found himself in a deep well. Verse, verse 11, 
the Samaritan woman made it a point that Jesus didn't come with no, he didn't come with any bucket. He didn't come with any jar. And in order to access the water that was there, you had to have a long enough rope to be able to go down. You have to get something in there. But the Samaritan woman told Jesus, the well is deep. And right now, that's what I'm going to focus on just for this Bible study. There's another level to this um, talking about springs. But I want to um, emphasize the difference between a shallow well and a deep well. On Sunday, the apostle talked about um, changing wells. And he talked about new and old wells. But I believe that God is continuing this message because we're not just considering new and old wells. We're also considering shallow wells and deep wells. Shallow wells are cisterns and wells are ones that go deep into the ground. So there are three main differences. And I want you to take note of this. The first difference between a shallow well and a deep well is, is how deep is the depth? Write that down. Number one is depth. A cistern is shallow. A well is deep. So how deep you go in God will determine whether you have a cistern or a well. Hold on. I, I got to get up for this because I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I gave my camera enough space so that I could stand up and just, I, I feel like I'm in church with you guys. I see so, I see Carmen saying, come on, Alex, I'm about to go right now. Just, just stay with me. So the first key between a cistern or a shallow well and a deep well is depth. How deep you go will determine whether you have a cistern or a well. This is what we have to understand. Shallow does not mean that there's no depth. I'm going to say it again. Shallow does not mean that there's no depth. What shallow means is that your depth does not last long. Shallow means that your depth cannot carry enough. Shallow doesn't mean that there's no depth. It just means that there's not enough depth to carry a lot. So a lot of times we asking God for abundance. We want the best things of God, but God is looking at us and saying, how can I give you abundance and you're only a cistern? How can I carry, a, how can I give you abundance, but your well is shallow? You see, the, the, the thing about wells is that wells are not in the control of God. I'm going to say that again. Wells are not controlled by God. What determines a cistern and, and a well is how deep you dig. So the thing is, how deep are you willing to dig? Because where you stop will determine whether your well is shallow or whether your well is deep. So a lot of times we want the great and deep things of God, but we've only dug a shallow depth. We've only dug far enough to only carry a little bit. So the first difference between a, a cistern and a well is the depth. Wells go deep into the ground, but cisterns only go deep enough to carry something temporary. Ah, oh, stay with me. So the first one is deep. This is the second difference between a cistern and a deep well or well, and it's the source. Water from a cistern or a shallow well is usually collected by rainwater. Shallow wells do not produce their own water. Shallow wells or cisterns get their water that is collected from rain that has fallen to the ground. Ah, this is very important because a well gets its water from underground streams or currents. So the second difference between a cistern and a well is the source. A cistern or a shallow well gets its water from high above, from, the, from, from higher ground. But a well gets its water from deep to um, streams and underground and underground uh, springs. So that source is very important. Why is it important? Because a cistern can only carry what, is, what it 
collects when it rains. But my, the, but what we have to understand is this. It doesn't always rain. Cisterns only collect water when it rains. But what happens when it doesn't rain? There's no water coming in. And a lot of times we get stuck as believers. We get used to only collecting rain when it rains. And when it's raining a lot, we collect it. But when there's no more rain, we stop getting water. We stop getting fresh revelation. You see, the problem with this is that is that we've seen during this quarantine how good collectors believers are. We can collect all the information about coronavirus. We can collect a lot of information on the statistics and the data of coronavirus killed this and coronavirus uh, has this uh, hospitalization uh, toll numbers. But here's the thing. We don't even know two verses on what the Bible says on what the word says about sickness and disease. So we can collect collect a lot of information from news outlets, from social media, from all these different sources, and we're collecting it, but it's just sitting. The reason why it just sits is because we don't have wells where the word, the living water is. We rather collect information from the world than dig deep into this word. And that is an issue. And that is a problem. Where is your source coming from? This quarantine has revealed that there are many believers with shallow wells, that they only collect water when it rains. But what happened when there's a dry season? Where is your source coming from? Is your source coming from a high depth? Or is it coming from the ground where the running waters are? And let me tell you something, one month into the quarantine, you could already see what believers were shallow wells and what believers were deep wells. Because you had people writing more about the information they collected, but they couldn't tell you anything about what God says about sickness and disease, about what do you do? Well, what does the church do uh, when, when, when bad things take place? What is your source? So that is the second thing. The first difference is depth. The second thing is source. Where is your source? And the third thing is purity. Purity, 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 purity. Water from a cistern or a shallow well is naturally drawn from a higher level. Just like I said. The source is collected, but a well is so deep that it accesses water from underground. So the third one is purity. What happens when rainwater is collected into a cistern, it is not as safe to drink. It is not as safe to drink because it hasn't gone through as many layers of purification. So a lot of times the water that you will find in a shallow well is contaminated. Ah, that's why you have so many believers confused in their, in this season, because we're in a season of chaos and their information is contaminated. Their well is contaminated with the things that they're hearing of the world, but their water does not run. See in a cistern or a shallow well, the water does not move, it just collects. And because it just collects, there is contamination in the water. There's no purification. But a well has more pure water because it accesses the deep water that runs. And whenever there's a water that runs, it is purified through the layers of, of, of purification, through the layers of soil and rocks. It is running water, and running water is purified, and it's not contaminated. So those are the three differences between a shallow and a deep well. Death, source, and purity. That is very important. So let's, let's, let's dig deep through this even, even deeper. A cistern will never be as deep as a well. But what determines a cistern is how deep you dig. A cistern 
cannot tap into underground water source. No matter how long, no matter how long or how much rain it collects, if the rain ever stops, it cannot produce its own water. A cistern cannot tap into underground water because it's not deep enough. And God in this season and in this time wants us to go deeper, deeper into his word. This is, this is how we develop our wells. This is how we develop and dig deep by getting into his word. And a lot of times for many believers, we, we, we have cisterns, we have shallow wells, we collect preachings, we collect sermons. We're really good on a Sunday receiving the message and taking it in, but we never do anything with it. When we need something to drink, we drink from that. But what happens when the water runs out? What happened when, when the water is contaminated? Cisterns can never produce what a well can produce. There's a difference between long-term collection and long-term creation. I'm going to say that one more time. There's a difference between long-term collection and long-term creation. You see, back then in biblical times, when they would dig cisterns or shallow wells, it was to collect water for a later period of time. So they would collect the water for long-term use. That means that they, they would collect the water and down the road when it wouldn't rain anymore, they would have a source of water that they can go to. But there is a difference between a source of water that is being collected and just stagnant and not moving versus a well that accesses running water and is creating its own water source. See, there's a big difference between a well and a cistern. They both hold water and they both provide water, but the source is different. One is tapping into what has been collected and what could potentially be contaminated, but the other is tapping into a water source that is pure and creating constantly. So the question is, what are you tapping into this season? Unfortunately, uh, during this time and during this quarantine and with everything that's going on in the world, that you, you've been seeing a lot of people showing what sources they're tapping into. But I want to encourage you today that this is the best source that you could ever tap into. And we need to go into this deeper. God does not want us to be cisterns. He wants to pour out into us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is like a, a rivers of living water. Rivers are only accessed deep underground, not in the shallow area. And that's where God wants to take us to, to a deep level where we can access running water. That's what he wants us to tap into this season. So that's the question for today to reflect on. What are you tapping into? How much of this do you have inside of you? I know how much media we know. I know how much of, of social media we tap into, but how often are we tapping into the living word and water of God? That is a very, very, very big difference. But there's another difference. Back then, many people had cisterns. Shallow wells, like I said, they're very easy to dig. Shallow wells, you dig and, and you dig it big enough so that it can collect a lot of water. But there's a difference. When the Bible talks about Abraham being blessed with wells, Isaac being blessed with wells, Jacob having the blessing of a well, the reason why the well was such a blessing was because not a lot of people were willing to give the time to dig wells. And that is the, the, one of the other main differences is that People oftentimes would build cisterns instead of wells because of the price. The price was too costly. They, you know, digging a well costs more. Digging a well was more expensive. Digging a well was more, more labor. 
And a lot of times we don't want the extra work. We don't want the extra labor. It, it, it costs us more. It costs us more time. It costs us more sacrifice. And because we don't want to pay the price of the labor of, of studying this, we, we get stuck and left with cisterns. We become believers that are shallow wells. So when people come to drink from us, what kind of water are we giving them? And, 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 and God is tired of believers giving over contaminated water. There are too many believers that are giving contaminated water that they just collected off of sermons on YouTube, off of, off of this one church's live and another church's live and, and, and a news media sources outlets. And, and we're collecting all this information and our water is contaminated because our well is not deep. We are shallow cisterns and God wants us to go deep. When you go deep, you're able to provide water that is refreshing. That's why the woman at the well, she said, Jesus, what is this living water that you're offering me? Jesus knew what he had to offer. He knew that what he was giving was even deeper than what Jacob's well could provide her. He said, look, Jacob's well is good. Jacob's well has been providing water for generation after generation after generation. Imagine that Jesus ended up at Jacob's well and Jacob existed uh, thousands of years before Jesus did. Hundreds of years before Jesus did. And his well was still giving water. And Jesus told this Samaritan woman, I have water that is even better than this. And Jacob's well produced good water. Excellent water. But Jesus had something even deeper to offer. But my question is, as a believer, as, 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 as part of Fountain of Life Church, we are called. One, one of the main things that I used to love um, in, in, in Fuente, it's not there anymore, was the hand, uh, um, you know, giving the world to drink. That's our motto. Giving the world to drink. But here's the thing. What kind of water are we offering? What, 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 what are we offering that people are going to want to come again, want to come experience Jesus Christ again, what, that want to come and experience the Holy Spirit again? What are we offering? What are we giving to drink? That is very important. This is a season where God is not going to accept cisterns anymore. We don't have any more excuses to be shallow wells. No more excuses to be shallow wells. We have to go deep. But digging deep is laborious. Having a well is laborious because you have to, every time they would dig a well, they would have to put these stone, these, these columns on the side so that the well wouldn't collapse in. And, uh, and, 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 and that, 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 that is laborious. It takes time. It's not easy. But when you strike water, shali bayanda kamasaya. When you strike that water, when you finally hit that deep running stream, it's going to be worth all the labor. It's going to be worth all the digging. And you will always have well water to give. And here's a secret. Here's a secret that, that, that I'm going to that I'm going to conclude with. Because I don't have time to get into springs. But th this is a secret that, that I pray will bless you when you get into wells and, and when you get into, and, and into the study of cisterns and, and, and how, how agriculture worked back then. This is, this is the secret. And it's a biblical principle that if you catch this, my God, you will, you will never, 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 you will never get into um, chaos. You, you, you will never, um, feel like, like God is not with you. And the secret is this dry seasons only affect cisterns. They do not affect deep wells. Dry seasons only affect cisterns. Shallow wells, but they do not affect deep wells. That's why Isaac was able to prosper. Isaac was able to prosper in a famine. Not because his seed was different. 
Not even because his soil was different. It was because he had a well, a deep well. You see, dry seasons only affect cisterns because water that is collected will evaporate in a drought. And that's what we're seeing in this quarantine. A lot of people having the word of God, the water that they've collected, dry up on them. And they're like, God, why does it seem like this is a dry season? And the answer is simple. God wants to transition you from being a cistern to a deep well. Deep wells are not affected by droughts. Deep wells are not affected by, by, by famine. Deep wells are not affected by dry season because the source is underground and the stream of water does not uh, feel the effects of the outside heat or drought. When a river is one, running under, underground, it doesn't experience a drought. It's still running. But the question is, who is having access to their deep well? I submit to you today that you don't have to ever go through a dry season. Libra kimayandereve. That's why the Bible says in, in, in Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. That when you are planted by the streams, he who is planted by the stream of water will produce fruit in its season, in any season, and his leaf will never wither. There's a reason for that. When you're planted by the stream, and we know that Jesus is the living water of God, the Holy Spirit, like rivers of living water. You don't have to experience a dry season. It will be a dry season around you, but, but like Isaac, you will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Right now, there's people producing. There are people producing in this season. Why? Because their well is deep. Right now, there are people digging wells, digging wells. Living abundantly is a well. I don't know if Cookie is watching, but I feel a prophetic word. Living abundantly is a well, is a well, is a deep well. And right now you're still digging, but you're just starting to hit water. You might not have the finances that are being produced at the level you, you, you want yet. You might not see the viewers as much as you want yet, but you're hitting a well. You are hitting a well. See, see the thing is that people aren't willing to deep to dig past a shallow well. You could have stayed at a shallow well. You could have stayed in a cistern and collected things that people, the way that other people do it. But you are digging a well that's going to produce for generations. Living abundantly is a well. Is a well. And there's other people that are building wells in this season. Shika mayandarabashtaya. Angelica, I, I, I see, I, I feel on my spirit that God is producing a well. That he's producing a well in you. Angelica, do not do do not try to produce many wells at once. Produce one well, then go to another, and then produce that one, and then go to another, and then produce that one on your heart. You have you have ideas, you have you have so many ideas that are all potential wells. But if you try to do all of them at once, they will be a shallow well. But if you Concentrate on one and dig that one. You will access water. Then you will go to another one and access water. La bakimayanda staya. Angelica, multiple streams. Multiple streams is your portion, says the Lord. She libia mayandere bekibai. Shukusta la mansa. Deep wells, deep wells, deep wells. Deep wells. Sukara mayandara bakaya. TP kamayandara mastaya. To my apostles, Victor and Priscilla Sanabria. When you guys took over the pastoral ship, in the spirit, you recognize that we were a sweet, we became a cistern and we became a shallow well. 
And, 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 and over the years, you guys have been laborious and you guys have been working and it's been seeming like the work has been so hard. You get through one thing, but then you hit another thing. You get through, an, uh, um, through, through another layer of soil and then you hit another thing and it keeps going and cycling. But you guys are digging a well that's going to produce for generation after generation after generation. We that, that that's why God has has desired to position different things in order. And you guys have seen it and you guys have been been obedient to the word of the Lord. But God has been having you dig so that fountain can be a deep well that all people can draw from and that it will produce water for generation after generation after generation. Not many people are willing to put in the work. To dig wells. But every person who comes to fountain of life will be able to drink water and produce like never before. See, Jesus didn't stay at the well. He met the Samaritan woman there and the Samaritan woman didn't stay at Jacob's well. But here's the thing. The encounter at the well produced for many. Not only did it produce for Jesus, but it produced for the Samaritan woman. She went back to the city and evangelized her whole town. And that's, and that's, that's, that's the secret. That when you come to a fountain, when you come to a fountain, you have no choice but, but to be changed by that encounter. And I close with that. There was no time where anyone in the Bible came to a well and their life was not changed. And that and that is Salimai Kimayandara That that is the the that is the gift that God has given fountain of life. That your life, that people who drink from fountain will never be the same. That's why people would meet their wives at the well. Why was it prophetic? How did how did how did Abraham know that? That Isaac, all he needed to do was go to the well and he would find a wife. Wells are prophetic all throughout the Bible. Nobody went to a well and their life wasn't changed. Today, I submit to you that God wants us not, not just to go deeper. I mean, that's, that, it, it sounds so cliche, like, oh, you know, go deeper. I don't think that's what God wants us. Uh, it's not. It's not that kind of cliche term. Oh, just go deeper. No. There's a difference between a well and a cistern, and the question is, which one do you want to be? And I, I tell you that. Um, amen, Minister Angel. I met my wife at, at Fuente too. I met my wife. I, so many people I've met there. Their loved ones at. Uh, at Fountain of Life. So I know what it's like to meet meet the woman at the well. I met my woman. Amen. Um, but I, I really want everyone to, to reflect on that. Reflect on where are you at? I had to do the same thing. Is your well shallow? Is your well shallow? God will never give you abundance with a shallow well. God won't, won't, won't see a lot of times we, we request, we're, we're asking God for rivers and we have a shallow well and it's not his fault. It's, it's how, how deep are you willing to dig? How, 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 how much of this do you want in your life? You see a, a lot of the questions to our prayers and, and requests can be found right here. And I think that's where God is getting at in this season. I believe that the last six months of this year will be great. If you don't believe that, that's fine. I'm not operating on your faith. I'm operating on mine. For me, I declare and decree that my last six months of 2020 is going to be great because of what I know in here. Because I know what God would do when things were bad in the world. That's why the Bible says we are in the world, but not of it. We are not of it. God, God, oh, God always prospers his people in times where the world is going down. Why is that? Because he just wants to show off that he is the greatest source that you could ever have. 
Your life should shine and show other people how are you prospering during this time. And, and, and that, that, that's the easiest form of evangelism you could ever do. Let me, tell, let, me, let me give you a secret. The easiest form of evangelism you could ever do is bear fruit. I wish people would grab that. Libra kamayandashta. A lot of times we think, let's go in the street and evangelize. Evangelism in the street can be done. But when you produce fruit, people come to you. If you notice, people follow Jesus. People follow Jesus everywhere he went. Why? Because he produced fruit. And when people see fruit, they will follow and they will ask questions. God wants his church to produce fruit. Fountain, God is asking for fruit. And you can only produce fruit when your well is deep. So I believe that when the apostle preached on Sunday about changing wells, you know, considering both old wells and new wells, I also believe that he, he, he wants us to consider, is your well shallow or, or is your well deep? And if your well is deep, help another person dig, dig their well. Help them labor to, to, to deepen their well. Because this is important. Jesus is the living water. And he wants to pour out. And, and a lot of times we talk about overflow. You know, ah, my I'm gonna sit down for this one. I'm closing now, but I keep getting different things from the Lord. It's easy to overflow when you're a shallow well. It is easy to overflow when you're a shallow well. But when you're a deep well, it takes a while to overflow. And a lot of times we ask for the overflow of God. And the thing is that when you're a shallow well, water will run over easy. But overflow, overflow isn't automatically a sign of depth. Overflow is not, overflow is not, is not an indication of depth. And a lot of times we think, man, this guy is overflowing in abundance or he's overflowing in revelation or this person is overflowing in this or in that. But you don't know how deep their well is. Depth is determined by how your water moves. The deeper your well, the more access is running water. And running water is, 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 is movement. God is a God of movement. God is not a God of, sta uh, 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 of stagnation. When God has water, when God pours into you, he doesn't just want it to sit. And when we are cisterns, when we are shallow wells, we, 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 we get contaminated water and then we overflow contaminated water. What is a better blessing? For you to overflow with contaminated water or for you to be able to provide many, 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 many people, animals, livestock. See, in, in, in biblical times when they would have wells, the animals would go to the wells and, and, and people would go to the wells. It was, it was like a central hub. It was like social gathering place. That's, where, that's, that, that's what God wants us. God wants us to be so deep in his word that people are drawn to our well. And the question is, when people go to your well, are their lives changed? When the Samaritan woman met Jesus, her life was changed. Now, the question is, when people encounter you, do they encounter something they've never experienced before? And that's what I want us to concentrate on in, in, in this time. Shallow versus deep wells. The reflection for today is, where are we at? Honestly, where are you at? And where does God want you to be? I believe that, that God is doing a work even now. And as I close, I'm going to pray. And I want you to pray with me wherever I, I don't know where you're at. I can only reflect on me and where I'm at and where I want to go. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this study. 
We thank you, Lord God, that you, you are the ultimate source of living water. Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice that you did on the cross. We thank you that once we accessed you, we accessed everything that we need. But God, I pray that um, you would help us in this time. Help us as believers, as the church, as the body. With so many divisions that is going on right now, I believe, Lord God, that the divisions are between shallow wells and deep wells. And God, I pray that no matter where we are, that we would reflect and understand uh, where where we're at. God, I pray that um, that as we reflect, as 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 we we study your word, that you will show us where we're at. And God, if we are cistern, like I said, shallow does not mean that we don't have any debt. Lord God, uh, you know that this message is not about co condemnation, it's not about putting anyone down. It's about the amount of depth of water you desire to give us. Your word says that you desire to give us um, abundance. You desire to give us um, more than we could ever ask or think of. But God, we pray right now, Lord God, that we would examine our depth, that we would examine our source, Lord God. Are we just collecting water? Are we just collecting things and have it um, just sit there? Or Lord, are we accessing the running living water of your word each and every day? And God, if we're not there, I pray, Lord God, that we would get there, that we would um, make a commitment to you today, Lord God, to transition wells. To go from being a cistern that can dry up, that can become empty, to a well that can that 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 is deep, that can provide, that is never affected by a dry season. And God, we pray that as we do that, Lord God, that you will take us to that to that uh, level that you desire for us to go. Lord God, may our source never may may we not put our confidence more in the sources of the world than we do in the source of your word. This is the most important thing you've ever given to us. And we pray, Lord, that you would um, help us to access this great living water that you've given us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.